Hi, scenario analysis answers what if questions, as well as the most likely case, what is the possible upside and how bad could things get. This is a tutorial example and we're going to build the income statement down here, this very small financial model. And the income statement, the result that we want to get is, is our net profit. And that depends on three variable factors up here. The inflation rate, which affects the price of our uh, our cost of goods, the interest rate, which is the amount we've got to pay back on a loan, and the tax rate. For each of those, we've got our central case here, the best estimates of our values for our central case, but we've also got estimates for our best case if things go well, and worst case if things go against us. We're going to take two approaches to doing scenario analysis. The first is that we can just come here and just do a switch so we can look at our central case, a, a net profit of 250 odd thousand and compare it to our worst case and compare it to our best case, our best case 421,000. And then we'll look at uh, doing a data table to look at all the combinations of two of our factors, our inflation rate against our interest rate and we can see all the combinations there. We'll also take that a bit further if we know the kind of probabilities of each of our different scenarios we can come and, and work out a kind of probability weighted expected value. If you want to follow along then there is a link in the comments below that link takes you to this website where you can download the files. It's a start file which is building it from scratch as I will do and then there's a the final file that I've been showing you. So let's get started. Here we are in our starter spreadsheet. You can see that we've got to fill in the model details in a few minutes. We've got an assumptions area that contains all the building blocks for the model. It's got for each of our three variable factors, it's got and those are inflation rate, interest rate and tax rate. It's got our estimates of what would be the best case, the central, the base case and the worst case. We've also got an estimate of how likely each of those uh, cases are going to be. So for interest rate, for example, we're saying that the best case is only 10% likely. It's 50% likely that we get the central case and 40% for the worst case. We've got some check cells here to make sure those numbers add up to 100% as expected. We've also got some fixed inputs. These are things that won't change and we can depend on them being the same value. For example, sales, COGS, cost of goods sold, uh, a bank loan of 5 million and our fixed costs of 200,000. What we've done for the moment is for our first calculation we're using the, the central case for the, our variable model inputs. A quick word about structure and layout. As I said we've got our assumptions at the top and then everything else is going to be a calculation and we've used the Excel styles here to differentiate our different type of cells, our hard-coded fixed inputs are here, a kind of black text on orange. Our calculations are like this, an orange text on grey, and our check cells are here. Okay, let's build our model step by step. We start off with our sales, which we can simply take from here. We want to work out our costs. First of all, our cost of goods sold, subject to inflation. So that's going to be our cost of goods. And what we're going to do is going to multiply it by one plus our inflation rate of central case 9%. So we get 327,000 negative because it's an expense. Our fixed costs, we'll simply take from our assumptions area. And what we can do is just add those two together to get our total costs and then we can add our sales and our total costs to get our income before profit and taxes of 473,000. We've got to work out the interest on the bank loan and what we're going to say is equals, I'm going to use a minus cost in expense. We've got a 5 million bank loan and we're multiplying it by the interest rate that the bank is charging us to give us minus 300,000 and then we'll just add those two to get our income before tax 
173,000. Our tax calculation is a bit more complicated. We're not going to pay tax if we make a loss. So we're going to say if the income before tax is greater than zero, then it's uh, I'm going to, again, it's going to be a negative because it's an expense income before tax multiplied by our tax rate. Otherwise, it's going to be zero if we make a loss. There we go. In that case, it's 164. Again, we can work out our income after tax by simply adding these two together. That gives us 138,400. And if we want that as a percentage, we can simply divide our net profit by our sales. And that's our income statement. Next, we want to choose between the three scenarios. If we look at our model inputs here, we can see that they're simply referencing the, the central case. We have to do this in two steps. The first step is to create a data validation, data validation cell where we can choose the best central or worst. So I'll click on this cell here. I'll go to data, data validation. I'll say that we want a list and between it's going to have those three values. And so we've got a list, let's just choose in this case, the best case. Now let's write some formulas so that these values reflect our chosen scenario. I'll come over here and I'll say X lookup. And what we want to do is we want to look up our chosen scenario. I'll fix that. And we want to look it up um, in this array here, a rest of items, I'll fix that as well. And we want to return in this case, inflation rate. I won't fix that because I can move that one along. That gives us 12% for the worst case. I'll just copy that over. And that's giving us our worst case values. If I want to check and come over here and let's change it to our best case, that's giving our best case values. Notice that as we come along and change our results, our net profit changes so for best it's 208,000 and for example for worst it's 48,000. We'll now create a data table that will give us a results grid here that will show us how our net profit varies when we change the inflation rate or the interest rate. I've already set up the framework, I've created the grid and I've referenced the, our free inflation rates here and our free interest rates for each of our different scenarios there. To set up a data table is a bit of a fiddle, but it's worth it because it's such a useful thing. The first thing that we've got to do in our top left here, cell here, is we've got to say uh, what is the thing that we want to calculate. So I'm just going to reference the income after tax there, 138,000. Next, I'm going to select the whole grid, including the, the headers and I'm going to go to what if analysis on data and I'm going to go to data table and it asks me two things the row input and the column the rows are our interest rate this is our rows on here and our columns so we're going to go back up here and give us the cell interest rate for rows and the column input cell the value that we've got on that column is inflation rate I'm going to click on OK come back here Data tables by default don't recalculate automatically, so I've just clicked on F9 to recalculate it. So this is a useful result. It shows that um, our net profit can vary anywhere between 51,000 and 230,000, depending on the interest rate and the inflation rate. Remember, however, that that is for our third factor, a constant value of the third factor, which is the tax rate. The tax rate is currently set at the central value of 20%. If we wanted to see these values for the worst case of tax rate, we can simply change our data validation. We can see that 25% is being used there and we can come back and press F9. That forces Excel to do a recalculation. And so now we can see our calculated values as of the worst case tax rate. Finally, if we can make an estimate of the probabilities of each uh, scenario for each of our different factors, 
we have got these here in the assumptions what we can do is we can create a probability matrix of all of these I'll do that underneath and we can calculate the combined probabilities which I'll do and I'm going to multiply that by getting the references right dollar d50 I think that's good we'll copy and we'll paste it over that's good the check cell says it adds up to 100% so we've got the combined probabilities and then what we can do is we can calculate each value in this uh, grid above by its probability and sum them up so in this case I'm going to calculate this multiply this by its combined probability of 3% and again since I've laid out everything I can copy those down and I get the uh, kind of probability weighted numbers and I can simply then sum these up and let's just do that and so we get a, a value of 138,675 which is our probability weighted best estimate of the net profit in our next videos we will be building more sophisticated financial models so for example uh, we'll take the same model but this case we'll do sensitivity analysis rather than scenario analysis we'll employ and revise the same data table approach but we'll do another approach based on excel tables and pivot tables which sometimes yields better results we'll do that we'll also look at the Monte Carlo approach we'll talk about how we build a Monte Carlo distributions and then again we'll use the same data table approach but this time with lots of trials rather than just a few scenarios or a few sensitivities and we'll do the classic data table approach but also the Excel table approach we'll not only do that in Excel but we'll also do the Monte Carlo trials in Power BI I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any comments we'd like to hear them just add them in the comments below if you've enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of our future videos coming up, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.